When the Monkeys Came Back by Kristen Franklin, illustrated by Robert Roth. Hey, so Robert Roth, the illustrator, drew all of these pictures. Where does it look like they are? The setting, it looks like they're in a jungle or they're in the trees. It also looks like it's daytime because the sky looks lighter. Doesn't look like nighttime sky where it's dark and blue. It looks like daytime in the jungle. Let's see what this book is going to tell us. We've read it a couple of times already, but I wanted to talk to you about the setting and where we were, where it's, where it is set. That's where the story takes place, at least in that picture. When Doña Marta was very little girl, the valley was a peaceful place. Children giggled as they chased each other between rows of tall corn. Fathers whistled as they dug in the gardens, and mothers hummed softly as they wrapped black beans and cornmeal in banana leaves to cook. There was one old road in the valley, but it was an ox cart road an open place for meeting friends or cousins, a nice place for walking, a sunny place for catching lizards. There weren't any cars at all. The valley was a quiet place, except when the monkeys called. wonder what sound a monkey makes. <laughs> There's a big letter E. Every morning and every evening, as a, as for as long as anyone could remember, the monkeys announced the changing of night into day, the changing of day into night. At dawn, they would howl and bark to one another, and the noise they made was like thunder in the trees. And then at dusk, when the sun goes down, they would hoot and scream, and each leaf and each blade of grass would tremble from the sound. So the monkeys in the trees, when the sun would come up in the morning time, and it changed from nighttime into day, the monkeys would scream and howl. <laughs> and then at nighttime, when the sun would go down, and it would go from daytime to nighttime, the monkeys would howl and screech again. <laughs> e -e -e. What sound, what letter makes that sound? E makes that sound. <laughs> That's what the monkey says. Monkey says that too. One day, a car chugged and spluttered up the old road. After that, more cars came. Not many at first, for the road was an ox road, not a car road. Marta was afraid of the cars, and the sound of the, and the smell made her hide behind her mother's skirt. More and more cars came, and trucks, and more noise. Before long, it wasn't safe to walk down the middle of the road, or to stand and talk in it, or to chase the quick little lizards. Still, the monkeys shouted from the trees, drowning out all the noises for a few minutes each day, hooting to one another as they always had, waking up the world in the morning. <laughs> and calling the workers to go home from the fields at night. <laughs> the rains came and went, and Marta's dress grew too short. And one day, some men from the city came to Marta's house. So Marta's dress grew too short? Or was Marta getting taller? Right? Remember things live and that living things grow and change over time. They offered her father a lot of money to buy six cows and a brand new dress for Marta and asked to cut down some of the trees on the side of the mountain. Marta's father agreed, and from that day on, uh-oh, the forest began to disappear. Oh, so they purchased the right to cut down the trees. Who do you think's going to go away? If the trees go away and the monkeys live in the trees, who else is gonna go away besides the trees? Uh-oh, let's see what happens. I think you're right, if you said the monkeys are gonna go away because they live in the trees. No trees, no monkeys. At first, it was just a few trees, and a lumberman cut down the, only the biggest trees. 
the ones with the hanging vines. The monkeys didn't seem to mind. They howled and barked and scolded just as before. But five years later, when there were only 24 trees left in the forest, uh, the monkeys went away. Uh-oh, no trees for the monkeys to live in. Then no monkeys. Marta didn't know where the monkeys went. One night, just as the sun slipped from behind the hills, the monkeys shrieked and hooted and cried louder than ever before. Some said it was because of the full moon, and others said the rainy season was near. But the next morning, the valley was as silent as a stone. Do stones make noise? No, they don't. What's a stone sound like? Yep, silent. Over the next few several years, the last of the trees was cut down. What had once been a forest was now covered with stumps and tangled brush. There were only a few birds, but no monkeys. Most people forgot about the monkeys, and they had roosters to wake them up in the morning, and lamps to work at by night. But Marta didn't forget. When she was 15 years old, Marta married Emilio. Emilio worked for Marta's father, and when her father died, he left his farm to Marta and Emilio. You have a lot of land now, said Marta one day. I would like to have some of it for myself. Emilio laughed out loud because in those days, women did not own land. Soon, we will have a family to feed, said Emilio. After I plant corn and beans and squash, there will be nothing left over to give to you. The rest of the land belongs to the cows. What about the land on the side of the mountain, asked Marta. There are too many stumps for a garden, and it's too steep for cows. That's true, agreed Emilio. And though it went against the custom, he gave the land on the side of the mountain to Marta. What are you going to do with your land, asked Emilio. I'm going to bring back the forest, said Marta. And that is what she did. <gasps> what is she planting here on the side? Little trees. She's got little baby saplings that were seeds, and then they were seedlings. Now they're little saplings. And over time, of course, the saplings will grow into big adult trees. She wants to bring back the forest, all of the trees. Marta planted the trees from the foot of the mountain to as far up as she could climb. And when the sun baked the ground in the dry season, she hauled buckets of water to the trees. And when the hard rains washed the little trees from the soil, she gently replanted them. See the little roots down in the soil? The rain would come down and it would wash away the soil. And then the tree wouldn't have any soil for its roots. So she would tuck them back in, just like your mommy tucks you into bed at night. Year after year, Marta took care of the trees. In the next 15 years, she gave birth to 11 children. Look at them all, 11 children. Are there 11 children in that picture? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm, where's 11? I wonder if this is number 11. I thought that was Marta, but that must be the 11th child. There's 11 children in that picture. You see them? Coffee grows well on a mountain, Emilio would tease. Maybe you could plant coffee on your land, but Marta didn't listen. She didn't change her mind, and the forest came back. So her husband wanted to put crops and things there, like coffee and some other things, and the coffee and, and the or, or other trees and things that might produce stuff. But Marta just wanted the forest back. Many more years passed, and the trees grew higher and higher. Look at them now. 
Marta's children grew up and the children had children of their own. Emilio died and left the farm to Marta and her sons. One day, one day old Doña Marta took a walk along the road in the warm sunshine. The children greeted her as she passed. Good morning, tree lady, they said. Good morning, answered Doña Marta. So look, she changed over time. She was just a girl in the beginning of the book outgrowing her dress and then she got married and now look she's an old lady she's got gray hair she's still changing she's not growing up taller anymore but she's growing in far as she's she's changing her she's getting smarter over time and you uh you grow as a person and you change an older adult They tend to have grayer hair, maybe sometimes some wrinkles. Maybe they need a cane. looks like she's walking with a cane here. Sure. And little children come and they ask you questions because older adults know all kinds of things. They've lived a long time and you get smarter every day. So by the time you're older, you're very smart. Good morning, answered Doña Marta with a wink. W- w- wink. What's wink start with? A uh, w- w- w. And an old, old smile. She leaned on her stick and stared across the valley. <gasps> Look how big her trees are now. Her trees touched the sky. Thick vines wrapped around their trunks. Birds of every color filled their branches. And now, wherever they dropped their seeds, New trees would grow. The valley was bright with squash and corn and beans, but the side of the mountain was a deep, dark green forest. Forest green. Doña Marta's work was finished, and now the trees just grow on their own. After they're established in the ground, she took care of them when they were seedlings and saplings. But now that they are adult trees, they're left to grow on their own. And you know how little baby trees come? Because these birds, they will eat the berries and seeds in the trees, and then they fly over the land, and they poop on the land. And the little seeds go through the bird, and they get pooped out the other side, and they land on the ground, and there plants a new baby tree. And the forest just gets bigger and bigger. One night, Doña Marta couldn't sleep. As she lay in her bed, she listened to the sounds of insects and the twittering of the night birds. Out her little window, there's a W, window, see her window? Out her little window, she watched, watched, the moon shadows shift and change in her room. As dawn approached, she heard the roosters begin to crow. And then she heard another sound. What do you think the sound is? Yeah, I think you might be right. At first, it sounded like the barking of a dog. But soon, the barking turned into howling. Yo, go, yo, go. The howling into shrieks and the shrieks into shouts. And every leaf and every blade of grass trembled with the sound. Doña Marta hobbled to the window and leaned out. The dark air thundered with the sound of the monkeys, hooting, howling, screaming from the treetops, waking up the whole world once again. (laughs) That's like a howling sound. Doña Marta closed her eyes, smiled a wrinkled smile, and listened to the music that she had missed for 56 long years. So she started planting she, she remembers the forest back 56 years ago, and she started planting the forest, all the trees, and it took them that long, many, many years, 56 years for the forest to grow back. And when the forest grew back, who came back? Yep, because the trees, the, the monkeys live in the forest. They live in the trees. When the trees go away, the monkeys go away. And when the trees came back, the monkeys came back. Every morning now, 
old Doña Marta wakes up to the barking and scolding of the monkeys. <laughs> Every evening she waits for them to gather in the trees to shriek and howl and say good night. For a few moments each morning and each evening, the sound of the monkeys drowns out all the other sounds in the valley. For a few moments each day, it's just as if nothing ever changed. There they are. How does she look? The illustrator made her look pretty happy. She does. She's smiling. And look at the monkeys howling and yowling. Monkeys have teeth. Oh, they bite. Sure they do. You got to be careful around monkeys. The end. And there's the monkey. The monkey came back. Very good. Thank you so much for listening.